Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to use SketchUp for your home improvement and woodworking projects. Okay, so recently I've gotten a few requests from uh, some customers and some blog readers to um, use, show them how to use SketchUp for some, you know, some cabinet projects and uh, also I'm going to show you how to use it for some home improvement stuff. Um, so first let's take a look at the screen here. Uh, th these are a set of cabinets or some built-ins that uh, I'm planning on building for a friend of ours. And um, so these are some built-ins. Uh, they already have the bottom cabinets, so we would be adding the top cabinets for this. So um, by using SketchUp, I was able to uh, sort of model. So I took the, the room measurements uh, from their house and then I uh, redrew the bottom cabinets from, from the pictures and from the measurements I took. And then I was able to kind of play around with, with the design for the top cabinets. Um, and so it allowed me to figure out um, the style widths, um, the color, the, you know, the, sort of the final dimensions of the unit. And then I can save this as a JPEG and email it to her and then she can you know, suggest changes, um, so one of the things they want to do is add some lights. They're thinking about having actually two lights per cabinet here. Um, and the, cab the, the light they selected, um, they, they ended up buying from Amazon or something. Um, that one isn't available um, in sort of the, the library of SketchUp files you can actually use. Uh, so I just borrowed one from somebody else had drawn. So these lights aren't representative of exactly what they're going to be have, but this is the color they wanted. This is tricorn black from Sherwin Williams. And so, yeah, I was able to kind of see how I wanted to put these together. And so from here, what I can do is I can actually take the dimensions uh, of this project and then come up with my parts list. Um, so that's one example. The other th one we have going on right now is an egress. So we're actually going to be finishing our basement very soon. And I want to have an, uh, an egress in and out of the basement for safety and then for bringing in drywall and plywood, you know, furniture, that sort of thing. Uh, so having a you know, hole in the basement <laughs> where, where I can put a door um, will be really make that accessible. So as part of the permit process for that, so I'm going to be working with a contractor for the concrete and, and the wall and all that stuff. Uh, and they're going to be making the cut. But for the permit office, I needed to submit a drawing. So I, I talked to the contractor on what we're going to be doing and sort of whipped this up. And this is just the uh, before the steps because we have to add steps to this. But add, you know, building and drawing something like this in SketchUp is, is really very simple to do. And then this is the drawing I came up with for once the walls are sort of parged and then the store, these stairs are poured and in place. Uh, so this would be the view from inside the basement. This is an existing window. So this sort of stuff is, is why I use SketchUp. It's very simple to use and um, it's, it's great for small applications. So it doesn't compare really, at least the way I use it to say like a Pro-E or a SolidWorks uh, type program where you need to know the density and weights. And uh, so I just use it for concept drawing concept drawings so you can show somebody you, you can show somebody what something's going to look like and then for dimensioning so you can take that concept drawing and, or take our dimensions in a room and then come up with your final part dimensions so uh, let's get started so when you first download SketchUp and you install it it actually asks you for a uh, what kind of template you're going to be using so I have mine set to woodworking inches so this is what I'm principally working in, but if you're in the UK and you work with millimeters, you can do that. If you're going to be doing some outdoor landscaping stuff, house building, you want to draw a shed, then there's sort of landscaping stuff, feet and inches, urban planning, you can add people to this stuff. Uh, usually it's defaulted to simple template feet and inches, but I, I have mine down to woodworking inches. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I like having a couple more um, standard buttons. So by the way, I'm using SketchUp Make. So SketchUp is free, uh, but there's also SketchUp Pro. So if you're a commercial, um, if you're going to using your SketchUp drawings for commercial purposes, like drawings for clients or customers, like I did for those built-ins, then you probably want to use SketchUp Pro. And SketchUp actually requires you to buy a license for SketchUp Pro. 
and it's several hundred dollars, but if you're going to be doing a lot of drawings in SketchUp, then, I, then you're required to get it, and I recommend you get it. A SketchUp Make is the free version, and you can, you can use it to so educational, personal, pur uh, personal purposes, and that sort of thing. So I'm going to be using SketchUp Make uh, to sh in this video to show you how to use it, and it's, it's identical to SketchUp Pro, essentially. SketchUp Pro has a, some additional features that I, I don't think we'll use. Um, so you can download SketchUp Make from SketchUp.com, uh, and then if you decide that you want to get into woodworking and, and build projects for clients, if you're, if you're a hobbyist but you want to actually, uh, or if you start a small business or a cabinet shop and you want to uh, make some drawings for customers, then you'll need to use SketchUp Pro. Uh, so this, again, this is SketchUp Make. So what we're going to do is add, we're going to customize our toolbar by clicking on View, Customize Toolbar. And these are the buttons you can add to the screen. So the ones I use all the time, I'm going to drag the standard views up here. All right, and then we'll be done with this. So looking up here at the right, uh, the standard views. Um, and we're going to break these videos down into sort of, you know, uh, steps here a little bit. So we're going to do something basic in this video. And then in, in the next couple videos, we'll do some more challenging projects. But I wanted to show you the basics of how this works. So let's go across our bar here, and I can kind of show you what each of these does. So you have your cursor button, your eraser, uh, your line button. This is, if you hold this down, you can see a line or a freehand. It's really hard to draw uh, well with freehand. But a line, you can just kind of click and then drag. You actually don't hold the mouse pad down. You just click once and then draw to a different point, and then it'll keep drawing, and it kind of snaps to other points. And then you have an arc, a two-point arc, a three-point arc for circles, that sort of thing. Uh, rectangles, you can just kind of do one of those. Um, what else? So we have, it. this is the extrude button. This is concentric. You can move projects. Uh, the, the main buttons I use are the measuring tape, and then you can change the views of stuff by, with this, this guy here, this little swirly view changer. You can manipulate, you can move the view left or right with the hand, and of course you can zoom. Uh, the magnifying glass with the arrows sets everything in the frame, so it just fits, sits inside the frame. The magnifying glass alone, if you click on it and move it, slide your finger on the cursor up or down, uh, it will zoom in and zoom out. So we're going to start with these standard views, and this is an isometric view. This is an overhead view, a front view, side, other side, and rear. Um, so I drew these, and it looks like the, on the bottom plane, because I have a top view here. Um, so what I'm going to do is just I'm going to select all this stuff and delete it by clicking delete. All right. So let's draw a simple shape and then we'll get into dimensioning it. Um, so I'm going to draw a rectangle since the goal of this project will be to build maybe a, a cabinet so you can figure out how to put it together, how to dimension it. Let's click on it, a rectangle and anywhere over here I'm going to just click and then drag. And now if you look at the bottom right hand of the screen, you see there's a dimensions box. So the dimensions box, um, so the first one is, looks like the length, the, the next um, number there is the, uh, the width. So for instance, if I wanna draw a, a box, let's say, I'll, click, I'll just click there, and before I click anything else, I'm gonna click on dimensions. Let's say I wanted this to be 96 by 48 or 48 by 96 for a sheet of plywood. So I'll type in 96 inches, comma, 48 inches, and hit enter. And now it, it'll set it to those dimensions. So it eliminates the need for you to get it right to the perfect dimension when you're drawing it. So I just draw something and then go down in that box and I change it all the time. So this is a uh, four by eight sheet, uh, let's say of plywood. Okay, well it's 96 by 48 inches. Now let's make it three quarters of an inch thick. So how do we do that? Well, we're gonna come over here to the, um, this little extrude button that's actually referred to as push-pull. All right, so we're gonna click the push-pull. And so you can get a better idea of how this is working. I'm gonna change the view by just kind of rotating with the, using the orbit button. So I selected the orbit button and I'm gonna click and drag somewhere over here. All right, let's see if I can get this so you can kind of see this from a 3D view. All right, so that's just a two-dimensional drawing right now, that's that rectangle. Um, so what I'm going to do is use push-pull, and I'm going to select the surface just by hovering over it, and then I'm going to click and pull it up. 
and I can click and push it down, click and push it up, whatever. But again, you can see the, the, the distance in there is set to some, some value and it changes as I move it. So let's uh, let it go wherever, but I want it to be three quarters of an inch thick. So I'll type in three quarters. You could also type in 0.75 and then I'm gonna hit enter. And that is now set to three quarters of an inch in thickness. So you can see like this is like a three quarter inch thick piece of plywood. What I can do now is add some, let's give it some wood texture. Uh, so I'm gonna come over here and click the paint button, this paint bucket. And then I have a bunch of different options. Uh, so I can select uh, a, this from this color wheel. Um, I could change the opacity. Uh, I can also put in a, a hex color. So for those built-in cabinets for our friend, what I did was uh, I actually took a screen capture of Tricorn Black and used an eyedropper from a different program and, and figured out what the hex code is of, of the paint colors in her room, of the Tricorn Black, and then I'm able to just put them in here. Uh, and then you have that available to, to use. Um, you also have, so let's see, spectrum, some standard crayon colors. Uh, I'm gonna click on this brick, and then these are sort of real world textures you can add. So I'm gonna go down to, but you have a choice here, landscaping, metal, brick. I'm gonna select wood, and then there's a bunch of different wood textures looking things you can use. This one sort of looks like plywood, so I'm gonna click that one. All right, and close that. I still have the paint button selected, and there we go. So this is where we'll end our lesson today. This is just a simple 48 by 96 inch uh, sheet of plywood. And um, so we figured out how to set up SketchUp, how to get some of the extra buttons we want, uh, what the views are, what the buttons do. And we drew a simple sheet of plywood, right? Four foot by eight foot sheet of plywood. And we can move it around and change our view. Um, so from here, in our next lesson, we'll start building some more 3D shapes. But this is a simple 3D shape you can build fairly easily. And uh, you can see from some of the examples I gave you that it's, it's uh, a pretty useful tool in helping you sort of dimension and, and show clients or friends. In this case, I showed my wife what the egress would look like from that basement. So it's a pretty handy tool. It's free. And I suggest you use it if you're going to be doing any sort of home improvement or DIY project where you, you have to communicate what you want something to look like. Uh, either to a contractor or to you know to to your spouse or to your friend or whatever um, so uh, in the next video we'll get into some more of the 3d structure stuff so we'll see you then